what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel man today today we're gonna make some major progress on the ef sedan i said this a million times now i'm still waiting for the brake lines to show up it's two days out and today we're going to be installing the entire front suspension five lugs up control arm lower control arm traction bar tie rods possibly the axle as well too i want to get it out of the garage i want to get the car um much more completed so we can drop it so we can move it for some other festivities but uh, the goal here is to get whatever I have for the front suspension installed So right now I'm gonna go ahead and start unboxing a lot of the stuff that's just been sitting right here in the back on the cart for The last couple of months. I want to show you guys what we're gonna be using in this build as I pull out each part I'm gonna lay it on the table outside so we can have it all nice and organized for the installation So this right here guys 96 2001 Honda CRV five lug front spindle this i got from the junkyard and uh is all nice and refreshed you guys should have seen that video if you didn't be sure to go back and check it out but we are going to be using the crv five lug and i'll explain to you guys as we are installing it this right here is the front sway bar we got it all nice and clean and painted but we didn't install it because we needed the bushings and we have those now can't forget the brackets to those these are the oem control arms that came off the car all i did was clean it up really nicely Gave it a nice flat black paint job and then i installed some es bushings in them they are ready to rock and roll always remember guys cut away from yourself not towards yourself i don't know what's what but we're just going to unpackage them until we get what we are looking for this right here is the es sway bar end link bushings this goes to the lower control arm and secures the sway bar into place this right here is the sway bar bushing, 19 millimeters to secure the uh, sway bar in the bracket and then bolt it up to the subframe. This package right here, I pulled it off the green CRX because I put some OE replacement ones on there. And these are practically brand new. Skunk 2 Pro Series upper control arms. We're gonna be using this to, if needed to be, to correct the camber using the CRV front spindle. I'm excited to get a lot of these boxes out of the way. I'm going through my pile trying to figure out which ones are what so I don't open stuff that don't need to be open in this video. This is a rock auto part, so it's a suspension related item. How does rock auto know to not send you duplicate magnets? This here is front left and front right outer tie rods, right? This box right here, guys, is a brand spanking new Max Peen Rod EF traction bar. If you guys don't know, I run this a lot on a lot of my cars here on the driveway, and uh, we're gonna be rocking this traction bar as well. From what I can see on the table, it looks like we have everything we need to be installed other than the coilover, which is still down below over there, and axles, which I've already shown you guys. It's also right there on the floor. Got everything laid out right here on the table, guys. This is everything we're going to be installing. And I just took some pictures and stuff to post on Instagram because if you guys don't know, man, I post a lot of this stuff on my everyday doings on Instagram first. So if you guys want to get a first look on anything that I'm doing here in the garage, it's always Instagram that gets it first. So um, we're going to be doing the lower control arm first and then the upper. So that way um, the spindle won't droop if we install the upper first or the bottom and then the spindle. So we're going to do the lower first and uh, the hardware is already on the subframe it's a 14 millimeter right there grab my tools here real quick i will need my impact because i like ugging everything just to drive it in guys just to drive it in got to get my favorite kindergartner chair <laughs> okay that's a weird angle right there Put that a little sideways sway bar points toward the back so this is this is passenger this one's driver this should go up pretty snug So I'm gonna go look over here on my factory spindle passenger side just to get a reference of the upper control arm. So swinging in towards the rear passenger. This driver. So I don't have any hardware on here because I reused used it on that car over there. So I'm gonna have to find some hardware. Unfortunately, 
no resto tuna hardware probably gonna have to grab that later but i do have some like cleaned up 17 factory nuts so i'm just gonna go ahead and use that for right now I'm gonna pop in the passenger side as well too because we need to do the traction bar before we put everything else on because the bolts go underneath the axles right here for the radius rods. Grab another one of these. Upper control arm, may as well. So before the traction bar, I'm gonna do the sway bar because the sway bar connected to the subframe, connected to the lower control arm, it's actually gonna help it keep it up instead of droop. So sway bar end link, sway bar bushing. I hope I have the right size, 19 millimeter. I didn't measure it. I just went based off the year making model on Google. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the sway bar installed. Next up, sway bar end link bushings. This goes between the sway bar and the lower control arm. the old stuff Kasura. okay so next thing up guys is the traction bar let's go ahead and get this not on the table but over here unbox this and show you guys what we're working with oh my goodness max p and rod if you guys are watching <laughs> this gotta go this this definitely gotta go Max PD and Rod since 2006 focus on performance, but we have the traction bar right here. I've used this numerous of times. I have this traction bar in the H2B CRX, in the LSV Tech CRX. I have the same traction bar that's in the KRX. I also have the same traction bar that was in the Flipper X CRX. It was the LSV Tech Turbo we did about two and a half years ago, and all of them seem to be perfectly working fine. So we're gonna be rocking the same thing in this car, guys, and uh, it does come with all of the hardware, which is right here in this bag. It's pretty straightforward to assemble this. The Heim joint here has um, one nut, goes on like so, and then this threads onto the radius rod. I don't know what you guys wanna call this. I've always called it a radius rod. And um, you thread it in. Like I said, I'm gonna count the threads on the other car to kind of get it somewhat close instead of just eyeballing it. And um, the traction bar itself bolts up like the factory cross member. I've liked this design over the tow hook location because the tow hook location will um, kind of move around over time through all the torque because the EF and DA uh, relies on the front traction bar and radius rods where the EG, DC and EK relies on the A arm and the traction bar kind of helps keep it in place. So this bolts up like the stock cross member, two 17 millimeter bolts and it goes right up and then a radius rod connects to this, the opposite end of the radius rod goes to LCA. So let's get this installed. I'm using the factory hardware with washers and there's four of them. Ran into my first issue with the traction bar and it's not a traction bar situation. So the traction bar is installed and uh, this mounting location for the passenger side radius rod is actually touching 
just a little bit on the alternator and uh, my solution for right now is just to cut off a piece of that bracing i'm just going to cut off a section right here and um make the clearance eventually i mentioned this before eventually i want to switch over to a t7's um ac power steering delete kit and uh it sits up a little bit higher the design is much better than the k2 and stuff right here and hopefully we'll have that clearance issue um resolved the krx has the t7 kit k24 low setting on the efk2 motor mount and it doesn't even come close to the traction bar like how this one is I don't know if you guys can see it but uh we have clearance right we should be okay the engine's pretty god dang solid and when the engine torque it goes up i'm only worried about it going down and shifting the alternator once it hits the uh bracket if it does so now let's do the radius rod we're also going to be using the factory hardware for the radius rod to lower control arm so we're going to go ahead and just do that now uh I'm gonna go ahead and uh get the heim joint into the traction bar which uses two spacers two washers and a nut and bolt system max heating rod traction bar installed so i left the lock nut loose in case i need to adjust it but i won't know how much to adjust it until we get the wheels onto the car so i'm gonna leave them loose for right now and i also just noticed that my oil pan dash 10 is still open so i need to block that off All right, guys so this this is an import direct o'reilly's brand r6 type s axle for the driver's side 36 millimeter i talked to the homie ravi out in florida uh he was the one that had that gray civic wagon k24 turbo that he let me drive while i was out there i asked him what setup are you running in your car because it's k24 he has the crv front spindles which are 36 millimeter he said k20 rsx type s driver and k20 um eighth gen civic si passenger so in the previous video we rebooted the z3 axle which i had sitting in the backyard forever i went to go buy a type s we're gonna find out to see if this is gonna be short bind perfect or not transmission side rsx type s let's go ahead and just get this installed before the spindle we are in this thing is so beefy compared to the 32 millimeter and then over here we have k20 z3 with the reboot oem we are running the rsx type s half shaft which came with this engine from the junkyard and uh i've never removed it other than putting the transmission on so 
yeah that's our setup z3 passenger type s driver k20 type s half shaft now let's get into the spindle and see if these axles will work oh my god these spindles are super heavy <sighs> We have a fair amount of play. RSX Type S 36 millimeter axles may work because right now, if I push the axle in, the axle does go into the tripod cup transmission side. And that just tells us we have probably half, if not three quarter inch of play. And uh, once we bolt it up, that means you know, if we have any up and down movement and the tripod and shaft needs to go in and out, we have that much to um, slip in and out. So, damn, okay. Good to know. So before I get going with the passenger side to see if the Z3 axle will work, uh, just want to talk about the 5 lug conversion real quick. The 5 lug conversion I'm using is from the 96 to 2001 Honda CRV. If you guys don't know, CRV, ITR have about 11.1 inch on the rotor and they share the same caliber. The part number right there is the same between the two and a couple of other making models like Acura Legends, the Honda Accords, the Honda Odyssey. Uh, but after talking around to a lot of people, uh, that has actually used the CRV spindle and actually are running it on their car and also searching on Google. Apparently, the 96 to 2001 spindle from the CRV is the same exact spindle on the Integra Type R. So, um, the only difference is this is a 36 millimeter. USDM ITR is 32, if you guys don't know. And uh, we're using this to keep it very budgeted and budgeted in the case of like, you know, instead of buying the full Integra, you know, follow conversion for an arm and a leg, we go to the junkyard we grab these front spindles we can use them on the car and then uh if there is a geometry change say using the spindle on an ef opposed to like you know using a da or an ef and then modifying that for five lug hubs um we can use the camera kits to adjust the camber so right now i'm just looking at it and the camera kit is set in the middle you guys probably can't see this but it is currently positive camber just a little bit now it is fully extracted down because we don't have a shock on here but it is um positive camera for what i can see i don't know where it would sit at if you use a factory upper control arm but it's nice to have the adjustability in case we need to adjust it so um the crv spindle is what we're going to be using for the front the rear I haven't done the research on how people are doing the rear on a budget. Now, most cars like EG, DC, Integras, EKs, news, you know, type R rear follow conversion. But for budget guys like us, um, you know, you can do a hub swap. You can remove the hub in the back and then, uh, you know, I don't want to put out false information. I'll do more research on it and I'll touch topic once I get to the rear. Although I am going all wheel drive. So my all wheel drive trailing arm is going to be five lug from S1. I kind of want to say because us four lug guys use DA rear trailing arms or DC trailing arms, it's practically the same using the ITR rear trailing arms. So I don't see why it wouldn't just bolt up, say if you bought a full ITR CTR conversion, I know it's different and more difficult for the rear of of the wagon trailing arms so i can't really speak upon that as well too i've never done it so i can't give you guys information but um yeah as far as i know for right now we're running the crv front we'll touch topic on the rear later so now let's get the passenger spindle into the car Actually, it looks like we have plenty of play, so that's good. Somehow this axle nut is stripped, so I can't use it. 
but I think this axle is going to work for us. I'm pretty stoked about that. The fact that if I didn't have the nut on and we can push it in, maybe half an inch, that's plenty for us to not have any type of bindage. And I'm stoked about that. Yes, sir. I forgot. I did the overhaul on my brother's suspension and all of his 36 mil axles are right here. So, try to find a uh, nut for my car. Yes, sir. It's crazy, man. It's starting to look like a car again. I didn't tell you guys. Um, off camera, I cleaned the headlights and threw them on two days ago. I don't know if you guys even noticed it, but <laughs> uh, yeah, headlights are on. Fenders are fully secured as well, too. And I did gap it to the hood and everything. Part number 4200 is front left outer rod. Front left, driver, passenger. I'm surprised there's no locking nut on the uh, outer rods and the inner rods don't have them either. So I need to go through my scrap bin here and find my old rack and see if I can get the, uh... huh, that's cut off. Oh, right here. Yes, sir. Hopefully they're the same thread pitch. Originally I cut those off because I couldn't take off the lock nut. Huh. So I ended up just cutting off the rest of the outer tie rods on the old one right here and broke the nut loose. And now we have lucky nuts for our new inner and outer tie rods. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the new one, this guy here, installed. Like I mentioned, the steering wheel is centered as far as the revolution going left and right. And all I'm going to do right now is pretty much adjust the tie rod to get the spindle to like have the rotor pointing straight forward. Obviously, this is going to have to go to the alignment shop. And we're probably going to just trailer it since it's going to be front wheel drive anyways. But we're going to do that once we do the entire suspension all around the car. So right now, just going to eyeball it, get it as close as I can, and then lock it in place. So I remember when these upper control arms were on the green CRX over there, Nilo told me to just max it all the way in and that should kind of put it in the green based off uh, what it was reading on the rack. So I can already tell you that the camber is a lot less. Now it still needs to compress. It's probably gonna go in a smidge a little bit more, but big difference. Look at this side. Leaning, it's leaning out for sure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, native camber the Skunk 2 all the way in on the driver's side. And I think that's gonna be it for our suspension overhaul. Don't worry guys, I'm gonna mock up the ITR wheels just to get a good look at it because I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging off like that. So currently the wheel has 225.50 Neo Gens on it and I'm probably going to try to run 225.50.15 uh, and the car is going to be a little bit higher than this right here and I think it's going to look freaking awesome. The vision man, the vision is it's coming to life. Damn that should look good. Oh man. Alright guys so all my stuff is cleaned up, my wheel is put away 
and uh, I think that's gonna be it for us today. Did that rhyme? I'm super stoked, man. I got the whole entire front suspension installed, all the brand new components installed along with that. And the only thing left, like I mentioned, is the stainless steel brake lines, which shows up in two days. And then we'll do that. And then we'll work towards the back on the all-wheel drive conversion along with the five lug and everything pertaining to that. But that's gonna be safe for a little time because I, I don't have any of that stuff yet. Progress is better than no progress, man. And uh, I'm very stoked, I'm very happy, and I'm excited because the vision, like I said, is coming to life. Oh, and I need a 4040 prop valve too because that's the factory one. I need a 4040 prop valve to put the icing on the cake so it can bleed the entire system when it's ready. Don't worry guys, I'll throw some pictures at the end of the video so you guys can check out and pause the wheels on the car and drool over it because I've been staring at it for the last like 15 minutes before I took it off, man. It is freaking looking amazing. Where does this go? When it comes to anything in life, for me building this car, you gotta have a game plan. You gotta have a vision. You gotta have a goal. And then you got to find the best way to tackle um, every aspect to get to that goal. You know what I mean? And I've been chipping away at this car since we've gotten it. Well, we've gotten it for a while. But since we brought it to the driveway, we've been chipping at it. And, dude, we're close. Uh, I think tomorrow, I'm not sure. I think tomorrow the conversion harness should show up along with the ground cables. And we can get that all put into the car. And then, literally, it's just fluid and program the ECU. I've said this the last two or three videos now, but you know, once the parts show up, it's gonna get real. You know what I mean? And then after we do all of that, everything else follows. The radiator, the exhaust system, cleaning the undercarriage, putting the turbo kit on. Man, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited. I don't have a set goal for this car, but uh, we're moving right along and I want to keep this momentum going. <laughs> Before you guys know it, it's gonna be K all wheel drive turbo. I don't know if you guys have caught on just yet, uh, but that's the whole entire vision for this car, man. Um, temporary motor though. When the big motor comes in, we finna turn that thing up. Man, the other Dana started to come out. <laughs> So anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the progress update on the EF Sedan build. And if you guys did, man, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stick around for more progress update on the car, any minute now, we're going to fire this thing over. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.